All right, everybody, I want to welcome you to our training this evening. Um, hopefully the title caught your eye and made you want to come. One of my biggest frustrations in the world of 4-H is 4-H club meetings and Robert's rule of rules of order. So I think my question for this evening, and you can help me answer it in whatever way you feel is appropriate, is do Robert's rules of order, or do Robert's rules really create order? So the goal of what we kind of want to talk about this evening is we want to take a look at Robert's rules of order, kind of better understand what they are. Um, if you have questions, you can use the chat box and we can talk about them, or you're more than welcome to unmute yourself and ask questions. Um, I also want to discuss with you alternative ways that clubs can make decisions, maybe making it a little bit easier for some of our younger members to actually engage in a way that's um, beneficial for them. And then I also arm you, want to arm you with tools to simplify Robert's Rules of Order. I know some of you out there may be longtime 4-Hers who, or FFA members who've been doing Robert's Rules of Order your entire life, and um, you may think that I'm crazy to tell you that you don't have to use them at your meeting, you just can't break away from them. I understand. Um, I was there. I've been there um, at, on a personal level. So I want to give you some tools that may help you actually to be able to maybe simplify them to make them a little bit more um, conducive to a 4-H club meeting where you have eight-year-olds to 18-year-olds sitting at the same table along with parents and other people who maybe don't always understand what we're doing. So with that in mind, let's talk about who the heck is this Robert guy. So Robert was a U.S. Army general. His name was actually Henry Martin Robert. And he worked to create a book um, about parliamentary procedure published in 1876. So thinking about this, Robert's Rules of Order have been around for a really long time. Um, and the fact that they are there to kind of help regulate a meeting is why we continue to use them. So the rules are rules for conducting a successful meeting. So it makes sense that if you wanna have a successful meeting, you're gonna go to this guy, uh, Henry Martin Robert, and use his rules of order. It allows for efficiency in making decisions and allows um, people to voice their opinion. And here is a picture of Robert's Rules of Order. And I only do this because I think it's important for us as people who are dealing with a new generation of young people to look at the book that we're using to remember that maybe this isn't the book that necessarily is going to best serve the young people that we work with today. You can see it's a, it's a little bit of an older book. 1876 and so just the visual might help us to better think that maybe we need to change up things that we do in order to make it more um, conducive to the young people that we work with. So the goals of pro parliamentary procedure or Robert's rules of order are to extend courtesy to everyone to make everybody feel welcome, happy, um, wanting to be there, um, like they are, are in a meeting where they can voice their opinion. It also allows us to focus on one thing at a time, which makes sense. We don't want to have 13 different ideas and try to discuss them all at once. It also observes the rule of majority, which basically means that the people, the most people who agree with an idea get their idea passed or get their idea to happen. And hopefully it ensures the rights of the minority group or the group that maybe doesn't necessarily agree. The one thing I will say is that, and Correct me if any of you have a different experience than me in 4-H, because I would I'd love to hear about them so we can better make sure that we focus our attention the right way. But at a 4-H club meeting, I would say that 97% of the time, most of our decisions are with that majority. We don't have a lot of controversy when it comes to 4-H club meetings. If you have a maybe a livestock committee meeting at the county level or um, maybe a county council meeting, you may see some more controversy because people have very strong opinions, but for the most part, when we're talking about a young person's club, um, we're really seeing that we normally observe the rules of majority. So for those of you who aren't familiar with what Robert's Rules of Order actually looks like, I found um, a lot of terrible YouTube videos. Um, so if you have a chance, feel free to Google 4-H um, club meetings. Um, there's some that aren't very loud. There's some that are just, you know, not very well done, but I want to share with you one that I did find, um, and that way you can kind of get an idea of what we're talking about here. So I'm just, it's about a two minute clip, so I'm going to play through it. Um, if the sound doesn't work or you can't see something or hear something, please let me know. Um, I don't normally play videos during these, and so I'm not sure this is going to work out. So here we go. The floor is now open for new business. What's the first item of business? The purpose of a main motion is to introduce business to the group. A main motion is debatable, amendable, and requires a majority vote. Debatable means the motion can be discussed pro and con. Amendable means the motion can be changed. 
Majority means more than half of the votes cast. Mr. President. Yes, sir. I move that we participate in the Adopt a Mile program as part of our community service project. A second is required for a main motion to show that another person wishes the motion to be considered. I second that motion. Is it properly moved and seconded that we participate in the Adopt a Mile program as part of our community service project? Is there any discussion? The president will ask for debate or discussion once the motion has been properly moved and seconded. An individual wishing to discuss a motion must gain recognition from the chair. Mr. President? Yes, Katie. I think we should participate in this program because it shows a good sense of community service. Also because it shows a good sense of pride in our community. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Mr. President. Yes, Mr. I am in favor of this motion because we could easily turn it into a fundraiser by separating the aluminum cans, sending them to a recycling center, and taking the money off of that. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Mr. President. Yes, Lloyd. I'm strongly against this motion. It's in the busiest intersection in town, and with all the semis going back and forth, it's unsafe for the children to be by the road. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we should proceed to vote. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, please say nay. When calling for the opposition, the president may ask for a negative response, such as no or nay. In the event of a non-voice vote, such as raising hands, the president may ask for the same sign. Nay. The ayes have it. The motion carries. We will participate in the adopt a program as part of our community service project. The floor is now open for new business. What is so the first for me, business? hang on. So, all right. For me, I think that this video deserves a big X. It's not because I think the video is terribly made. I think it's well done. But I think we really need to think about the next question that I pose. Is this type of meaning realistic in 4-H? How many of you have seen this happen where you have all high school students wearing khaki pants and 4-H shirts, knowing exactly what they're supposed to do, and five of them sitting around a table? This just isn't realistic for what we do. All of us think of our meetings and that is never going to happen. And no matter what video you choose to watch about parliamentary procedure, Robert's Rules of Order, I think we can all agree that that is not a realistic way for us to run a meeting. We have eight to 18 year olds sitting around a table. Um, most of the time our table is chaotic with parents. Um, most of them don't know what parliamentary procedure is. And so, and we often elect presidents that are 12, 13, 14 years old because that's the only kids that are showing up to our meeting every time. So how many of you have a club meeting that looks like that video? Anybody out there? Yeah, me either. I've never been to a club meeting that looks, I've never even been to a junior leader or adult meeting that looks like that. So I think the key for me is that we need to keep what we can and want to do realistic to make sure that it once again best fits our club. If you haven't had a chance to um, look at, this is kind of small print, but if you haven't had a chance to look at um, our new rules and policies, um, listed in them is the vision of the Wyoming 4-H program. And I'm not going to, oh, I can read through the beginning, but it just says the vision of the Wyoming 4-H program is to develop a world in which youth and adults learn, grow, and work together as catalysts for positive change. Nowhere in there, and I know I told uh, my colleagues that I'm probably going to get yelled at during this meeting or people are going to go home and be like, that girl. Um, but I think nowhere in there does it say that we have to teach young people how to do parliamentary procedure. Um, I don't think it's something that we, we want to ditch, but I also think that we need to make sure that our kids are having a great experience versus worrying about if they made the motion correctly. What we want them to do is make decisions, and part of that is in there. So we help them develop life skills, and, and skills of life are making decisions and being able to make choices. So I think if we can do that in a way that's positive, it fits within our vision. The other thing that we also list in our rules are the experience that we have, want young people to have. And so the things that we're saying that 4-H's can provide as an experience is the opportunity to set goals, the opportunity to work with a caring adult, the opportunity to do some hands-on learning, an opportunity to display their things publicly like a fair, and the opportunity to use their skills learned at, their, uh, at the county level, state, regional, international, wherever, at, a, at another level. Nowhere in there does it say that we need to have them have a run a meeting or be able to learn how to make a motion properly. While all those things are really important, I think it's much more important to focus on the young person having a great time and wanting to be engaged and involved in our meetings than worrying about if they say things correctly or if we follow Robert's rules of order. So with that in mind, let's look at some alternative ways to make decisions. So one of the ways that we can make decisions is unilaterally. That means you as the club leader or the club president says, we're doing it this way. 
Now, once again, if you thought back to the vision, the experience, that really doesn't fit with what we do. We're trying to make sure that young people get the opportunity to make decisions and be part of an engaged process. So that may work sometimes where if the club leader says, you know, we have to do something this way because the county has a rule or something needs to happen, it may fit in very seldomly. Another way we can make decisions is a decision by a minority, by the minority group. And that doesn't make sense, but it actually does work pretty well in the 4-H program. And this can be done maybe by your officer team making some decisions that maybe the whole group doesn't need to decide on. Maybe you have committee work where people are making decisions for the entire group based on some feedback. Um, so minority decisions work well in the 4-H program because it can be done in a smaller group, not with 20 kids all around, but those kids who are maybe interested in a topic can get together and help make decisions. We can do decisions by majority rule, but nothing says that that has to be done um, by following Robert's rules of order. But we can just say, how does everybody feel about this? Everybody agree? Everybody who agrees, thumbs up. Everybody who disagrees, thumbs down. And you can see if there's a majority. The most positive way we can make decisions in 4-H is consensus. Do we all agree on that? Sound good? And for the most part, in our 4-H club meetings, the consensus is going to work out pretty well. So this all sounds great. You're like, okay, great. Do I just, do all the kids just say, hey, let's do this. And then we have a consensus. It's a little bit more difficult than that. So let's think about ways that we can um, gain ideas for decision making. So this is the process that you normally would think of as a motion. You know, we, we have a little discussion, we make a motion, um, and then we are supposed to have a discussion after that, and then we vote. Um, it doesn't have to look like that. Instead, what we can do is have a whole list of ideas and have the kids raise their hand for the one that they like the most or have everybody kind of agree on one based on how the discussion goes. It really depends on how big your club is. So one way that we can make a decision is we can do something called a note and vote. So maybe members have notes, post-it notes or something in front of them where they write down ideas on their own for one minute. Then they share their, then they could do it in pairs even. They share their favorite ideas. Somebody writes them all up in front. You can cross out ones that are duplicates. And then the ones with the most votes is the one that's discussed as a chosen idea. So maybe your thought process is, what are we going to do for recreation next month? And someone says ice skating, and someone says that we're going to go to the roller skating rink. Someone says we're going to go swimming, and you write all those ideas down. Maybe someone says, well, we can't go swimming because we don't have a pool in our town. So you cross that one off because that's a pretty legit you know, reason. And then in turn, you say, okay, everybody who wants to do idea number one, raise your hand or stand up or turn around or, you know, throw a piece of paper in there, whatever it is that you want to do. You can make it kind of fun. Um, and part of it is working with your president on this, but they can make it fun. It doesn't always have to be say a uh, a or nay or whatever it is. They can do vote in different ways. But this is a way for everybody to have an opportunity to be part of the discussion and not limited to just that one person that then comes up with emotion. Another way to gain ideas is mind mapping, also maybe called brainstorming. And so you can do this once again, break them into groups or committees. And so what you would do here is have a central theme. So in this case, it's community service. And then have kids come up with as many community service ideas as possible. And you may want to do this at a beginning meeting and then keep your mind map throughout the year. And then you could just choose the different ones that you want to do. Or maybe you vote on all once and say we're going to do this one in January, this one in February, this one in March. So they might decide they want to clean up, they want to donate some money or something, they want to help veterans. I mean, relief with a mind map, it's kind of endless, but it gives you a whole bunch of ideas and everybody has the opportunity to participate. And maybe they want to go even farther and they want to clean up at the park. And so then you can look at this and say, all right, how many of you want to donate? Um, and then people can raise their hand. How many of you think we should clean up? People can raise their hand. How many think we should help veterans or whatever your list says? And then you could even form a committee and that minority group then could work on the details of what it's gonna happen, who you're actually gonna to donate to, what park you're gonna clean up. Um, those kind of things necessarily don't have to be done by a big group, as long as the group in general had part in the decision-making process. You can also use popcorn. Um, this is basically one where members just say things that come to their head. Um, what kind of things, uh, you may decide what snack are we going to serve at our next um, concession stand? And the members say, I want to do hot dogs, I want to do nachos, and you just write down everything that comes up. Um, and then the ideas that aren't feasible are eliminated. If somebody says, I want to make um, uh, chicken cordon bleu, well, maybe that might be harder than we expected, so we don't have the resources, we just cross those off because they don't um, reach. I've seen Hawaii come up a lot about where we want to go on a freight trip. Um, obviously, Hawaii maybe is out of our budget, and so crossing that off makes sense. And then the group works to vote or reach consensus for one of the ideas. 
you'll find that usually if you have that older kid that latches on to an idea, the younger kids tend to follow, and so consensus is usually reached pretty easily. Um, but that way it kind of gives everybody a, a way to talk or join in on the conversation. You can have a gallery walk at your 4-H club meeting. This is great to do before a meeting. Um, maybe you had a discussion at your last meeting about something that your club wanted to do. And so maybe you're deciding that you want to help for community service, but you have 16 different places that you want to help and it's not feasible. So maybe you write a, a 16 of them up on the board on post-it notes. And then members, when they arrive, because a lot of times people arrive a little bit early or some people arrive late, can go walk around and write reasons why or why they don't want to, kind of like the process of debate um, in a regular 4-H meeting. Um, they could write those in the posters and then you can uh, go through after the gallery walk is completed as a leader or maybe an older member can go through and they can make concise notes within the gallery walk to come up with some themes. Uh, then while the meeting, maybe the president is doing the secretary's report, treasurer's report, those kind of things, then you guys, then as a group, you can talk about the themes that came up under the gallery walk and once again, reach consensus about one of the votes or vote on one of the things that you think might work out best. Another idea, one of my favorites, is a word wall. It's very similar to the um, note and vote that was at the beginning. Uh, but basically, this is the concept where people write an idea uh, on a piece of paper. It could either be that or a post-it note. Um, they put their idea on the wall, and then you group together similar ideas, kind of like in the gallery walk, and then you discuss them based on what you find. Um, if you're looking for how to make a word wall, you can take a shower curtain or a piece of fabric, and you can get the spray adhesive. Um, and spray it all over that and then fold it in with the sticky inside. And then when you get to your club and you can actually just peel it open and it basically makes like a giant post-it note and then members can stick ideas and things that they're thinking um, up on the word wall if they want to. Another idea we talked about already or I talked about already is committee work. So committees meet outside of the meeting and then present ideas to members. If you have a pretty large club, you could actually do this during a meeting. So if you have 20 members and you want like four committees, that works out perfect. Have a member pick a committee, um, try to divide them up evenly, and spend 20 minutes during your meeting doing committee work instead of having maybe your big group meeting. And so this committee is going to decide what community service is for next month. This committee is going to decide on our fundraiser. This committee is going to decide on barn decorations. Um, and this committee is going to decide on where we're going to go for our club trip. And so then they come back and say, as a group, the five of us have decided that these are the three options that we think would work best for our club. Uh, we need you guys to tell us which one you like the best. There was no motion involved. There was no I move that we, none of that happened, but instead we got some ideas and then members picked the things that they liked the best based on what was, what was presented to them. Some other ideas that could happen, um, you could have them create top 10 lists, the top 10 places we want to go as a club, the top 10 community services we want to do, and they can make it kind of a, a fun way to do that. Um, you could even watch a top 10 list from back in the day when David Letterman used to do those. Those are like old for kids, but most of us know what those look like. Um, you also may want to take some time. Uh, you could use a brainstorming worksheet, have them take stuff home with them, um, where they could actually take a worksheet home with them that they could bring back with their ideas. And so I think I pulled one off the internet. I just Google searched brainstorming worksheets, normally they're done at school. Um, but you could pre-fill the topic, you can make it a clover, um, you can make it related to whatever your topic happens to be, but that way kids have some time to think about it. Not everybody can come up with ideas, uh, especially an eight, nine, and 10 year old. My 12 year old can't make a decision on what to wear in the morning, we have to like plan it out. So having her come up with a list of ideas while she's at a club meeting for five minutes does not work at all. So if she had some time, we could sit down and talk about it. Um, it would make things a lot easier for her to be able to do that. So just that means us as leaders have to plan a lot better, but it also gives our members a better chance to be involved in the decision-making process. If you want to help kids to brainstorm or come up with ideas, think about games um, that you could play at your club meetings that maybe aren't related to a topic, but maybe encourage brainstorming. Um, kids can create Mad Libs. If you haven't seen them before, there's books you can buy. You can also Google Mad Libs in 3,000 different place things come up that you could do at your club meeting. They're really super fun. You could have create your own 4-H Mad Lib about your 4-H club. So that might be a fun game to play that that encourages the idea of brainstorming. Uh, in my car, I always had these books called the If Books. Um, and so when I would take 4-H trips with kids or before meetings, you could write a question up on the board. You know, it's the question, if this happened, what would you do? Or what if this happened? And it kind of lets them think about ideas of what they might do. 
There's another one called Would You Rather for Kids. I would highly recommend the For Kids edition because the Would You Rather books are a little sketchy. Um, definitely some weird situations they put you in in the regular book, so the kid one is, is much better. Um, you can also role play or do some acting during your meeting, so maybe they have an idea of, you know, if we had the best display at the fair, what would people see when they went by? Um, if we were doing a really awesome community service project uh, to help our veterans, what would it look like? And so I think you could have them then get in groups and, and pretend that they're doing it, and then you can, the whole group can see the different things that are happening. So for all of you, have you thought of other ways that you've brainstormed or made decisions within your club that have worked well to be able to generate ideas? If you have any, you can either talk to them out or you can type them in the chat box. So I'll just give you a few minutes to, actually probably more like a minute to let us know if you have any ideas of ways that you can help groups to generate ideas for decision making. Also, if you just joined us, if you want to write your name and your county in the chat box, uh, so we can make sure to record that um, for our leader profiles. Once again, I should have given you a brainstorming workshop before we started, because then you would have tons and tons and tons of ideas. But since I didn't, um, feel free to continue to add them um, throughout the rest of the presentation if you think of any. As I was prepping this, I think one of the things that for me was the most concerning is the idea of helping kids reach a consensus, because I think that also often can be rather daunting. Um, it sounds easy, and for the most part with 4-H clubs, it, it may be easy because kids tend to agree with, with the greater good, but you always have that one kid who wants to be a little bit difficult, um, which is okay too. It's great to have a, a non-consensus sometimes to add a little variety to your 4-H clubs. So I think some things that you can do to help young people reach consensus is when you're making a decision, outline the focus that, that you are picking what is best for the group in order not to create an us versus them mentality. Um, I think that's really hard for some people to realize that we may not pick the thing that you like the best, but let's think about the whole group that's here to make sure that whatever we are doing is gonna best serve us as, as an entire group. Maybe you really enjoy robots and so that your club trip wants to be go to robot world um, or to the robotics um, conference that they're having, but does that really work for our entire group? Let's look at the interests. You know, maybe they're not project-based. Maybe we do something more as, at a fun level. Um, so just really thinking about the big group versus just you personally, which is also a life skill that's really important to learn. So if we can teach young people that, I think we've won no matter what happens. Also, wait, we're there to generate solutions or ideas. All ideas are valid when looking to generate ideas. So if a kid says the most ridiculous thing in the world, as the club president or the leader who was ever recording, write those things down, especially for our young little kids, like our eight, nine, 10 year olds, the fact that they're willing to tell you something that they're thinking um, is awesome. And so if they say something off the wall that doesn't make any sense, just write it down because you can always eliminate it when we go through and talk about the ideas that necessarily don't work. So don't, I think that's a lot of times why our kids don't talk is that they come up with these ideas and everyone's like, that, we can't do that. And so when you automatically hear, we can't do that, they, they don't wanna say anything else. But if you write down every weird idea they have, um, it may get to the point where they say too many weird ideas and at that point maybe we need to kind of back them off. But getting them to talk and to generate those ideas um, is better than not having them contribute at all. Also use a criteria to eliminate ideas. And so you may wanna talk about this before you start, but definitely cost is one that makes it easy. So if you're planning a club trip and your budget is, you know, 20 bucks a kid or $50 a family, and they come up with staying at the Great Wolf Lodge, well, if any of you look up the price, it's about 250 bucks a night to stay there. So it's just not gonna be feasible. Um, if they talk about taking an airplane ride or driving a long distance that, that takes in your time, um, maybe they talk about going to the local casino, maybe some parents got involved. Obviously that doesn't relate to our organization's mission. So if you can write down, you know, we're going to eliminate the ideas now based on cost, which of these really don't fit into our budget, cross them off. Okay, now ones that take too much time, we only have a weekend and this one's going to take us just, you know, five hours to drive there and then we won't have any time to do anything. So you can eliminate those. But it's good if they understand why you're eliminating things versus just you just, or uh, the club or the group just going and crossing stuff out. And then ask for feedbacks or concerns before, come, come, before coming to the consensus. So in turn, you have a list of five ideas that are left. Does anybody have any really big concerns about any of the five that are on the list? And then the one kid raises their hand and says, well, I'm allergic to bees, so I don't want to go to the local 
um, beekeeper's house because I'm afraid I'll get stung. Well, that's like, you know, logically logistical. So maybe we cross that one off. Um, but that way, you know, parents and kids have an opportunity to then voice maybe some concerns that they have. Um, at that point, address the feedbacks and concerns. I totally understand your concern. Um, however, I know that she has a room where you can watch the bees where you have to be anywhere near them, so it'll be okay. Or, or just talking through them to make sure that concerns aren't reasons for us to eliminate that idea. And then uh, work to re reach a unanimous consensus or a supermajority, which basically means almost everybody agrees. If you get to the point where it seems really contentious, that's where you can say, all right, everybody who Things that we should go raise their hand, everybody wants something to do something different, raise your hand. And that way you can kind of do the same thing as Robert's rules of order voting, but in turn you're just kind of, you know, raising your hand, putting your hand down. If you choose to go back to Robert's rules of order, totally cool with that. If you choose to make consensus decisions, that'd be great. No matter what you do, organization is going to be the key to a successful meeting. So make sure you, one, have an agenda. For all of the parents out there who need order and structure, please share your agenda. Um, I know it costs money or it's hard. Put it on Facebook, write it on a board, put it on a piece of paper, whatever it is. If you can make sure that everybody knows what's coming next, it really helps, especially like for me, my eight-year-old, it helps me to prep her to know what's happening so she's not so confused. And for our new parents who aren't used to an agenda that runs, you know, for those of you who may have been around long enough, you know, the pledge comes first, then the secretary's report, treasurer's report, committee reports, but for new people, they have no clue what's coming next and don't know how to prepare themselves, so share the agenda. And either at the beginning of every meeting or for sure the beginning of your whole entire club, please explain the agenda because the things that are on there make sense only to people who are part of 4-H and who have been part of 4-H. They don't make sense to people who, who haven't been part of an organization like 4-H. So I have this posted on the web and I can show you where those are um, at the end of this meeting. But basically this is a blank agenda. Um, it, it's from, I think, Rutgers, which would be uh, New Jersey. And so it basically goes through and goes through the, this is Robert's Rules of Order, the Parliamentary Procedure Order. You can still use that, but this way people know what's coming next and they can fill in the A, B, C, and D of committee reports, new business, old business, if you have stuff. But this way people have an idea of what the meeting is going to look like, even if it's not spelled out specifically. You do write an agenda, like I said, if you can make copies or post that on Facebook for all those parents who just want to help get through the meeting, it'd be awesome. I also use this tool in my former career as a 4-H educator in a county, um, and I posted this on our website also, so if you want to make copies, you don't want to maybe explain the business meeting every month, you could have copies of this available for your um, newer parents or for members who don't always understand. And it basically goes through and talks about what each part of the meeting is about. Um, most of you may not do some of these things. So for those of you who can't read it because it's so tiny, uh, one says call the meeting to order, explains what that means. Two says pledges, roll call, secretary's report, treasurer's report, project and committee reports. Some clubs don't have those, so maybe you get rid of that one. Um, club leader report, some clubs don't do that either. Ongoing old business, new business, some type of program, which is an educational a program, if you're doing demonstrations, adjournment, song and game. So this is posted as a PDF online, but if you do want it as a Word document so you can go through and uh, erase some of those things, I'm more than willing to share that with you also. Some other things that I've done um, to help educate you if you want to use Robert's Rules of Order is to create parts of a meeting cards, and I'll show you those. Um, and basically what I did then with parts of a meeting card is each one of these uh, 12, 13 things that are listed, I made them into basically a big sheet of paper. So on one sheet of paper, I would wrote roll call. On one sheet of paper, I wrote 4-H pledge. On the sheet of paper, I'd write American pledge. And what I did is played a game with the kids where I gave them each a sheet of paper and then told them all to get an order of how that would happen at a meeting. And so then the kids would try to get an order at the beginning um, to figure out what would come first and what would come last. And it was a great way for us to have a discussion um, sometimes the song or game came at the beginning of the meeting, completely appropriate. Um, sometimes it, someone put it in the middle, that might also be appropriate, but it's a way to talk with your kids about how the meeting is going to be run and what kind of things come first and what each thing means. And so you could reference this sheet um, to make that happen. In addition to that, we did voting cards. I'm gonna skip forward a slide. This is what the voting cards look like. So these also were sheets of paper. 
Um, and each sheet, I had my kids do the exact same thing. So I gave out seven sheets of paper to seven different kids and then asked them to get an order about how emotion happens or how we make emotion or make something happen. And so for those of you who, who may be unfamiliar with Robert's Rules of Order, the concept is that first comes the idea. And then once you have an idea, you have emotion where someone says, I move that. Oh, and one's missing here. There's usually a second, so it should be eight ones. So this discussion should say second. And then you have a discussion. You saw that in the video where someone stood up and said, I move that, or I'm in favor of this because, or I'm opposed to this because. After the discussion, you vote. And for the vote, you do all in favor or all opposed, or like they said before, you can do all, all say I or same sign, whatever it happens to be. But then what I did with these is made them really big and I stuck them at the on the wall at every meeting. So then it eliminated that kid saying, I, I make a motion that we, or I motion that we, because for those of you who do know Robert's Rules of Order, those words make you cringe every time that you hear them. Um, and so if you can put these up on the wall um, as eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper, each one of these sections, then you can point to the kids to tell them to help them generate what they're supposed to do. Um, another thing that we did was something called motion potion. And let me see if I put that into a slide. I did not. So motion potion, I posted the directions for this online, but basically it's a great way if you want to teach kids how to make a motion to make it fun. So you bring in a whole bunch of things that you are gonna make trail mix with. Checks, pretzels, marshmallows, chocolate chips, M&Ms. Um, and then you bring a whole bunch of things in that you would never wanna make trail mix with. Hot sauce, syrup, jelly, maybe some dried noodles. And you put everything on the table in front of you. And the goal is that the young people have to make a motion as to what they want to put in to the bowl of trail mix. So then the idea is that we're gonna make trail mix. Does anyone have a motion? And some kid may say, I move that we put in three cups of jelly. So obviously you have to explain that they have to eat this when it's done. And nobody really wants to eat, uh, the majority of the kids are probably not gonna wanna eat a snack mix that's made with three cups of jelly. So in turn, you can talk about how you vote a motion down, um, uh, how maybe when you don't second it, that it doesn't then in turn become a motion. And then you go to the next one. And then someone we move, I move that we put all the chocolate chips into the trail mix. Um, then there's a second, there's some discussion. Is anybody having a discussion? And someone we say, well, I love chocolate chips, so we should definitely do that. Um, and someone we say, well, I'm allergic to chocolate, so we can't put them in there. And then in turn, we vote as a group, all opposed. Um, all in favor, and then you put the chocolate chips most of the time into the motion potion. And then at the end, someone says, I move that we're done with whatever we put in there. But it's a great way to get them engaged in something that makes sense to them, because it doesn't always make sense to them to make a motion to go ice skating, but making a motion on something they're going to physically get to touch within five minutes of making the motion is a lot easier for them to engage. And it's a great way to introduce those little kids, especially to the idea. The biggest thing I, I just warn you is to make sure that you have a president who understands what they're supposed to do because in turn, you're going to have a lot of kids who want to make the motion and it's good to spread the wealth around so they need to make sure that they call on people so that you're not always having the same kid um, make the motion and um, second it. So just kind of a fun way to engage young people at your club meeting and also covers that whole idea of um, something fun to do at the 4-H meeting so it's not just a regular business. You can also provide parliamentary procedure cards to your members, and I did post this online also. It's really hard to read, but basically what this does is that you print it front to back, and it creates four cards um, that you can give to a member, and it basically talks to them about how to make a motion, different ways you can vote, and how to amend a motion. Then in the back, it has the um, order of a meeting. So basically that sheet that I showed you where I had a big sheet, this has a teeny tiny fourth of a page, um, if you have an awesome extension office, they may laminate them for you. And so that way you can keep bringing them back to every meeting and give each kid one so that they don't have to think about, you know, how do I, what do I say? What am I supposed to do? They actually have that in their hand. And so when it comes time to decide something, they can say, oh, um, uh, I move that we, uh, whatever it is, or I second it because they have that in front of them and they can reference it while they're, um, while they're trying to follow the meeting. Okay, hey, Sarah, can I interrupt yes. right quick? Yes. I have one of my 4-H clubs um, kind of stole those cards, I guess. I don't know, but they put them on their agenda. 
which would also be completely appropriate. So if you want to print them on each agenda every month, feel free to do that. Um, if you are going to give them out to members, I would highly suggest getting them laminated or maybe putting some contact paper on them because um, they're going to be probably used at every meeting. And so that way you have them um, for every different meeting. Thanks, Megan. All right, some keys to take away from this entire uh, thing is that use a method of decision making that works for your club. Don't force Robert's rules of order on your club and also don't be, feel like you have to use everything that I said. If you are really good at Robert's rules of order and your club is running like clockwork, don't abandon the ship. Use what works for you. If you have a whole group of older kids who are FFA members and this is their jam and they're doing really well at it, feel free to keep doing it. Just make sure that if you have little kids that we figure out how to engage them if that's the process that you're going to use. Um, whatever it is, I think the biggest thing is to make sure that members aren't bored, that they feel engaged, they feel like they belong, they feel like they're welcome and they want to be part of it. And often the reason why I say Roberts was bored or don't work is because they often don't allow for that. But you may think it works perfectly and I'm completely fine with that. Some education would be the key then at that point in time, especially for your new members. If you're stuck on using a probably, like I said, if you're stuck on using official Poly Pro, you do it. But use a revised version that works for your club members. Don't necessarily, if you ever get a chance to go back and watch the video I showed you, it's 15 minutes long. And let me tell you, they get into amending and calling a point of order and all kinds of things that just become foreign and way too overwhelming for our kids. And so um, if you have a parent who's really into Robert's Rules of Order, maybe have them watch this video and listen to me say, use what works for your eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 year olds. Don't get hung up on those nuances that, that then create bad experiences or unpleasant experiences for our members. Because remember, it's about them, not about us as adults. If you're gonna do something, provide education to members to help them know what they're doing and why, no matter what method you use. And so I think some of that is discussions at the beginning of the meeting, some type of things written on your agenda, maybe a presentation at the beginning of the year, um, whatever it is, just make sure people are informed about what's happening. Being able to make a motion and run a business meeting is not the goal of the 4-H program. Youth engaged in learning is. However, don't shoot me because I want kids to be able to know how to run a business meeting. That's not what I'm saying. But I think the overall goal is that kids are engaged in learning. And if Robert Trolls and Orb Order or your meetings are getting in the way of that engagement, that's when we really need to think about why we're here and what we're doing. And figure out what you can do to make meetings organized, but also fun and engaging. And I think that's, if you go away with anything from this, that is the most important thing I want to tell you is that we want our kids to have fun. Because if you don't have fun, you come to your meeting uh, and it was terrible and you're never coming back. And we've then lost that kid who may have really, really had a great time doing something else. And in the 4-H program, whether it's shooting sports or dogs or arts and crafts or whatever it is, don't make your meetings so unfun that they don't want to engage in the other aspects of the program and they think they just have to come because that's part of the program. We want them to be having a great time. And I'm going to end it with this picture because if you haven't seen this, this is probably like my favorite resource that I try to tell the world about. But I think that we really struggle to do this overall as a 4-H program, not only in Wyoming, but as a nation. Um, I think that we really forget to focus on the fun and the learning that comes with the 4-H program when we get so ingrained in the business. So a couple of things happen in the meeting cycle. One, I hear the parent that says, we had a 15 minute meeting and we got to go home, woo! And I'm thinking, you know, that's great. However, I just drove my kid from five miles out of town, which I mean, for some of you, maybe like 20 or 30 miles out of town. I sat there for five minutes and then you sent me home why am I having to be here? This makes no sense to me. Um, if you then make me sit for an hour long meeting, that's completely business. I'm thinking in my head, I just drove from 30 miles out of town to sit for an hour and have you lecture to me. So that's also not fun. So let's think about ways that we can have group decision making that last 15 to 20 minutes, get the things out of the way that are, that things that we have to make decisions on and do it in a way that's successful. Maybe have some pre-made decisions, then give them some choices and have a group consensus. Um, whatever you can to make that last 15 to 20 minutes. Then let's think about how we can learn something, whether we share it, have an adult share it, have a speaker come in, have another member from another club come in, um, just do a community service activity, help people out, whatever that is, do some learning for 40 minutes, and then let's have some fun. Let's jump and dance, let's celebrate birthdays, let's celebrate everybody that's there, 
let's play a game, um, let's eat some amazing food, whatever it is, um, have a reason that my kid then wants to get in the car and come back the next month because it's never fun to be the parent that has to force the kid to go to the club meeting. So, and Megan says this is her favorite um, in the chat box. This is also my favorite. So uh, this is posted on our website too if you want to share this with parents who necessarily don't believe in um, the 4-H wheel. Um, this is a great way to help engage some of those maybe parents who are very traditionalists in the 4-H program who were part of that group that had the hour-long business meetings and that's what they wanted to do. So, oh, there it is. Okay, um, does anybody have any questions or comments um, about anything in tonight's um, talk? Just don't forget to write your name in the chat box if you want to get credit for this because that's the only way I know that you were here. So if you can't find the chat box, you just scroll down and put your chat or you can tell me your name and your county now. Okay, I'm going to um, stop recording the meeting.